The project started in 2010 with the idea that these pictures are the type of photos that, for whatever reason, are too painful to keep. Sometimes literally pictures of things that are hard to look at. There might be a stack of images where it's not anything specific in the image that is so obviously difficult, but maybe those images uh, were made on a trip with someone or they're from a, a period of your life that it feels more productive to purge that stuff rather than um, look at it or sort of hide it from yourself. The images when submitted to the project get woven into a larger community of images that become not about our individual stories as discreetly they become part of a, a sort of woven conversation about what it is to be alive, what it is to go through hard experiences and the way that photography is constantly vibrating around in that sort of a comedy and tragedy of our lives. This archive is filled with pictures um, that hold a charge and whose production originally was not made for the sake of fine art, but was made out of enthusiasm, love, a desire to record, a desire to put a story together. And so for me, um, to be a sort of net where these images come is fascinating. And it is my hope that um, there is a sort of empowerment, too, that comes out of the act of submitting not only is a graceful way, hopefully, for the submitter to get rid of the image, but that its function then doubles as a way to talk about bigger notions of connectivity and technology and imaging and memory. Um, so that, you know, the image actually goes on to serve another purpose that's more, you know, altruistic. <laughs> I think I recognized pretty quickly in the project that negative space could be very effective. And also starting to understand the difference between images that are lower on the wall and higher on the wall, and how images that are lower on the wall become about people, and other images that are higher on the wall become sort of about types. Their details start to become too small to read closely. In addition, as the project grew and photo objects started to come in, such as full albums, um, rolls of film that hadn't been developed yet. And, and so things like that um, now rest on this like system of very like humble um, little wooden shelves that are painted white. And so those are a slight architecture that are meant to just sort of prioritize the the object and not the, the sort of display. This exhibition strategy is not the sort of museumological approach. This is uh, not the sort of museum of collected memories. This is an archive where these photos matter to me and that the hand behind this project is it's not sterile, like a museum display, that there are no kind of well-printed didactics guiding you through. Like the photographs, I myself am this sort of uh, vessel of, uh, you know, great, like better times and worse times, so I think that things that are sort of deeply felt for me at the time must come out and uh, it reminds the viewer that there's a there's a steward there's a, a caretaker um, there's someone who's uh, literally kind of trying to figure it out in front of them and so I feel that when they can feel my presence a little bit too that that's good because um, 
you know, the, the people have submitted to the project that's a sort of trust or relationship that started even if we never talk. So the exhibitions really rely on a sort of non-sterile, musical, negative space. They're like small gestures to kind of evoking in the viewer's own understanding of their own lives or all the other pictures they've ever seen and how those are um, all subject to potentially this kind of uh, tension. I had already been working on other projects where the backs of the photographs started to become the subject matter. So in this project, Too Hard to Keep, it became valuable thinking how I could serve certain needs where people wanted to get rid of the photos, but they didn't want those people or places to be seen or recognized. And ironically, um, you know, it's the submitter who's sort of protecting their identity. And then I could use those photos as parts of the installation. And, you know, to me, those are a sort of phenomenal part. They build tension, they're placeholders. They even more so demand a sort of contemplation by the viewer. They also get back to the kind of basic elements of what a, a photo as, an, as a printed object is. Uh, it might have gone through a number of updates or imprintings in terms of uh, who originally printed it. I find sometimes people will um, scratch or refine text later if they uh, have that image in their private archives for a long period of time. Other photos might have, you know, blue ink or black ink or maybe they were written in marker. And so just by virtue of that difference, um, those become heavier formal moments. And so I use those to direct and, and like maybe build or relieve tension in an installation. And then, you know, I leave and the installation stays up and I, you know, receive those photos later. You know, there's a lot of time where I'm distanced from the photos or when they're home with me that they're um, put away. You know, I was just thinking about the way I, I document my life, which is very minimally. And I think because I'm a visual artist, I think um, my, my day job, if you will, is my way of recording my life. Um, I, I really get to express things constantly that I don't document my life very well at all, frankly. I think uh, working with the archive, I feel like less pressure or, or kind of compulsion to record my own life deeply which, you know, I may or may not regret. But then again, you know, photos are just one kind of way of recording time. <laughs>